Hello guys, this is Pants36, and today's video is going to be an unboxing review of this kit that I've been waiting for for a very long time. This is Mini Arts Stug 3 O Series. It's the Prototype Series. In real life, it's not called the O Series, it's called like the, the I think it's like a Panzer Airbrook Canon Selbstafar Lafetta. Because it was like a prototype at the time, they hadn't even developed the name Sturm Geschütz, um for a while. But basically, what these are, it's the prototype of the Stug 3. And as you can tell, the chassis is weird because these were built pretty early on. And by this point, uh, the Panzer III, well, this is a Panzer III Aus B chassis. The Panzer III chassis that everybody sees, or that was kept and used later on, was basically the, um, the Aus E had the, the standard six row wheels with the three return rollers, and then that was basically what they went with. But the first four, the Aus A, B, C, and D, all have weird suspensions with either five or eight return rollers. The hulls are all longer or shorter than the Aus E, and of course they have different drive sprockets. And basically it's a, it's a weird little prototype. It's a very early Stoke 3. This kit was actually sent to me by the guys at Juno Models, who are the Canadian distributors for Mini Art and Tacom, among other kits, kit manufacturers. And uh, very grateful for, to them. Thank you very much for sending this to me because I've been waiting for this kit for a long time. It was actually initially in the 2017 uh, Mini Art calendar or whatever the their magazine catalog, I guess, is the word I was looking for. And it was delayed, I guess, basically a year now, because there were some inaccuracies with the engine deck of their Panzer III Aus B, because they put a bunch of kits out of these prototype Panzer III's. So I guess they were working on <clears throat> they were working on fixing the engine deck and a couple of things with the exhaust. And then, so those are all correct now. And then now they've finally come out and released this. Also, if you do have the, uh, the earlier, or their earlier Panzer III Aus B kits, you can actually I contact them and they will send you the replacement engine deck and exhaust free of charge to make it accurate. So I saw on their Facebook page a little while ago. So that's pretty cool if you're at all curious to have the earlier kit. So like I was saying, the kit itself represents one of the, I believe, five Stug 3 prototypes that were on the early Panzer 3 chassis. Basically, they were never used in combat because the superstructure is made of a, um, not an armored steel, more of like a, like a, I think they, cut, they said structural steel, so it's not at all armored, it's very soft. So you wouldn't want to take it into combat. It's not going to do well. And basically, it was there was just trying to see if the gun would work, if it was accurate, if it was feasible. And yeah, like I was saying, there's five of them made. They give you options here for three of the vehicles with A, B, or C on the front of there, which were used at uh, training grounds for a while afterwards. And they're used for maybe up until 43 or 44 for training Stoke 3 crews. So the box is actually uh, it's a standard size, but it's quite... Um, it's, not, it's not that tall, it's kind of smaller, but it's, I mean, it, it's not like a Dragon Stug 3 kit where you basically get like a full Panzer 3 and then also a Stug 3 in there. And this kit is fairly straightforward in the fact that you're going to use most of the parts, though, though it's still, still going to be some extras because they give you some stuff for the Panzer 3 kits in there as well. So the box here, we just have some information, Russian, Ukrainian, English information on the kit. Both the box sides have the, just the box art and name on here. And on this side, you can see some of the Kind of like these are, I guess, three renders of the finished model. You can see you got some nice photo watch in there. The tracks are workable, model cast in style. And there's a interior, um, not like the full interior, but interior for the fighting compartment, very similar to the Dragon Kits, where you get like the gun, a little bit of stowage, and the MP40s on the rear on the rear wall as well. So it looks pretty good. So in the box here we have the instructions, which is a very nice style, where it's actually like you know a book instead of a huge fold-out map. And then we have everything else in a bag, in one big bag. But it all looks very nicely packed in there. I don't think there's any damage or anything. First, let's look at the instructions. And then we'll go through all the sprues. So like I was saying, I'm not super familiar with Mini Art's style of instructions or anything like that. And I'm also, I'm very familiar with Dragon Stokes. I built about a dozen of them. But this is going to be a little bit new for me. And it's also a little bit hard to find information on this vehicle because it's a little bit obscure. But I have a little bit of knowledge of it more 3D renders that were kind of inside the box there. It looks really good. And here we have a sprue layout of all the sprues in the kit and some paints we'll need for the marking options in the rear. You also see the decals here. And there's more sprues over here, including many track pins down here and sprues for the tracks because they're like model cast style. Also, jig for the tracks. 
And it looks like the assembly here begins in a fairly standard way, though they actually uh, don't give you like a hull tub. They give you, I guess, a bottom with some sides to go on, which is kind of a more common thing now. I personally don't mind it too much, as long as it'll fit nicely and be nice and square. And the suspension here is going to be all new to me because I've never built anything like this before. But as you can see, it's got weird, uh, I guess, leaf springs, almost like a, like you see that on like a Panzer II, basically. Not the torsion bars and the swing arms that go through the hull on a, on a typical Panzer III. You have some photo watch options here on the final drives. You can put on two little circular pa uh, panels there. And also some little bolts, four little bolts that go on there. So it's going to be a little bit finicky, but shouldn't be too much trouble. And if it's too much trouble, I have some plastic bolts I'll use instead. But I'm, I'm going to try to build this one out of the box and just see how it is. Because it should be pretty awesome. I have some uh, idlers here with no photo watch on them, which is good because I hate the Dragon photo watch. <laughs> for those, that always comes off. And then maybe that's the rear plate, I think. It looks like it with the idler mounts there. Now we do, it looks like the other side basically, finishing up the suspension over there. Working on the exhaust here, which I'm pretty sure are going to be new parts. Because that was one of the things they fixed, I believe, along with the rear, like the vents on the engine deck or something like that. I'm not too, sh not too sure exactly what they fixed up. And here, just more little parts going on. Uh, it looks a little bit complicated, and just the fact that there's lots of things going on, but really it's just four of the same bogey assembly. So, once you get one done, you should be able to figure out the rest. Now over here, it looks like we are putting on even more parts. This is just a, rep a repetition of the last step, um, because you're just we're doing the same thing on the opposite side, so don't worry about that too much. Here are doing some wheels, and it's, this vehicle's eight wheels. It's not a Panzer IV chassis. It looks a lot like it because of the wheels, and also the suspension is quite similar, but it's not... It's an early Panzer III chassis. So we have some parts to go in here, and it looks like, see there's like a little roller piece in the middle that the wheels will pop onto. Um, but that'll, this goes onto the actual axle, and it's free spins around the wheels, so the wheels can spin nicely. Which, if anything, helps you paint them, because you can kind of move them around a little bit. And the same thing over here for the other side, just repeating. And going on nicely. Usually, uh, most manufacturers I see They'll just do it on one side, and then they'll have little brackets, which is, you know, maybe AG7, then AG8, 11 brackets, as what you put on the other side. But here they see me doing, they give you one side, then they give you the other side, which I probably prefer because it makes everything less cluttered, and often whenever Dragon does that, sometimes they're putting the wrong parts number, sometimes they want AG8 eight on this side and 7 on that side, and they'll, they'll put the wrong numbers on it, it just gets confusing, so it's nice and, straight, and straightforward, so I like it so far. You know, we're putting on some of the uh, wheels down here and just finishing it up. Now we move on to the tracks. There, I'm just putting the rest of the wheels here, it doesn't really matter. Um, now you have a jig here, so they're doing 96 tracks. I think it's 8 tracks per, so it's actually a nice number of sets you'll do here. And it, if you don't know Modicasting style, basically it's you put the tracks in the jig, and then you have these kind of like little sprue sections that have all the pins on them, and you just kind of wedge them in. You cut them off and those pins they'll friction fit and they usually fit very nicely and those don't go all the way through obviously there's little pins they're maybe like a couple of millimeters long but that should work very well I've done it I've not actually done model castings like specific ones but I've done trumpeter knockoffs basically they just do the same thing in their kits and they always actually work pretty well so I'm not worried about this it should be fine and they're also going to be workable which helps take them off and make them easier for painting now down here we're moving on to the engine deck and you can see we have a whole bunch of little PE, um, I guess, what are you going to call them? Just like grills or whatever for the, the vents here. And it looks complicated, but actually it's only four parts. They actually have kind of just molded it. Or I don't know how you mold PE, but whatever. They've etched it. So you're going to have four little parts here instead of a whole bunch of little guys. So that's good. And then a little more photo watch here for the actual tool clamps for the tow cable on the engine deck. And more photo watch inside the side ventilators. So, I was Lou versus was the word I was thinking of what those photo watches representing, and also we put on the new exhaust here. So this mainly here is I guess the new stuff to the kit, or new compared to the older Panzer three O's B's that they were doing. Yeah, it doesn't look too bad. It's just putting on some photo watch and some parts here. Uh, as long as that photo watch um, is easy to clean up without bending, it should be nice and straight and should pop in very well. So over here now we're looking at the fenders which looks like we have to drill a couple holes probably for tools 
and then you can have an option here of how you put on the actual fender. You can put it down or up, and you got some little foot wedge guys here and some springs and little retention pieces, so it should be pretty good. Uh, this kit might be a little bit fiddly in some of the small foot wedge details, but it'll look really, really good when it's done. And also the kind of the same thing over here for the rear fender as well. And then here's just the other side. Once again, they're just giving you a separate step for the other side instead of just a brackets for the opposite side part numbers. More drilling out of parts over here, and they tell you how to put on everything. This is what I always do with the Dragon Kits. Dragon Kits always tell you to put all these assemblies together, and then they just show you kind of whew, the elbows magically go on at the end. That always gives me fit issues, so I always put the fenders on, these guys on first, and then I'll put the superstructure on last. So here we're putting on the assemblies we've already done, the fenders. I guess we didn't put much of the fenders though, just the fronts and backs. Engine deck, front plate, and you're also putting in the rear wall. As well as the seat for the somebody. I guess that'd be like the loader maybe. And here we have a little more detail about what's going on the rear wall here. And as you can see we have some MP40s which is accurate. Seat for the commander. And I don't know if there's straps mold on those, we will check later. But there should be some little straps on those guys. Now we are moving on to the gun itself. Uh, the way this interior builds up is very similar, like I was saying, to the Dragon ones, and the fact that you have basically the gun, some seats, the machine guns for the rear wall, uh, and that's about it. You're missing the ammo storage and stuff, so it's not really a full interior, but it's if you open up the hatches, it's basically as much as you can really expect to see, especially if you have figures in there, so in the hatches at least, so I don't think it really matters. I'm not much of an, a full interior person anyways, because it just takes so long to build them that I get demoralized. But here we are, looking at the gun breech here, goes together nicely, got the shield there, here's the gun mount, looks very good, kind of just putting everything together, I mean you're just putting on parts here, you have options to put the periscope up or down depending on if you have the hatch open or closed, not really much to say here, you're just putting on parts, <laughs> and then seat goes on, and that kind of plops in the floor there, you also have a box here as well. Not sure what the box does, but it's probably a stowage bin for the rear, the rear hull area right above the uh, the idler. So here we have kind of you're putting on the rest of the superstructure. You got the roof going on the side walls. You have options for the front plate if you want the holes for the periscope or not. Uh, they tell you which one to use here. Actually, I guess if you look at the instruction manual or the the painting and marking options in the back, you can see that one of them has the holes for the periscope and two of them don't, I believe. So whichever vehicle you want to do A, B, or C. You can choose that accordingly. Uh, I guess you're putting on some more louvers here because they didn't want to repeat that step earlier. And when they're doing the engine deck itself, I guess I'm not sure, sure, sure why it doesn't really matter. No tech light here, and we have some radios going on this side here, which is a nice interior detail. Then some more parts going on here, like some tools. We have uh, photo watch for the tools, which is always nice. Like photo watch clamp details, it looks like a little bit. And actually show you that in depth here with a nice little zoomed in shot showing how the latch folds up. I always like photo watch tool clamps because they look much better than the mold of plastic ones. And then a couple of little details going on here really. I also have the gun going on here. The barrel appears to be one piece side molded but we'll look at that later. And they give you a nice side view here showing you exactly how the mantlet is supposed to connect with the actual uh, the gun mount here. A little farther down, we have the assembly of the headlights here with some photo watch for the front covers, which is good because it's nice and thin. Uh, Tammy also gives you that on their reboxed or their redone Stoke 3 House Bs, which is always good looking. Front mounts for the towing locations or whatever. And then some more tools going on here, like the barrel cleaning rods and stuff like that. And box on the rear and stuff like that. So it's just more, more small details here with a little bit of photo watch as well, as you can see, all the PE parts. Over here we're putting on the other box inside here, so I was right, these two boxes are the ones they were talking about earlier. We have another fire extinguisher here, which is interesting. One fire extinguisher per side. Uh, jack block here, the tool kit, There's a couple of fender supports go on, and it looks like a little headlight or something there. Jack goes together here, it's a typical, like a nine piece jack, I think they call it in the dragon kits. Basically you have the sides, front and back, the handle goes on two parts, which is exactly like a dragon one and the clamps go on there nicely. And also note that you have two different styles of clamps. You have the earlier or the later style ones with the weird little triangular end. And it looks like also more bolts along the length of it. 
and it tells you here if this is for the early vehicle and this is for the two later ones, B and C, even though that clamp style I believe is earlier. Not too sure about that. And over here on the engine deck we have some more parts to go on. These are the little holders for the tow cable. Now interestingly they don't give you a tow cable, they just give you the parts for the mounts and the ends and then they tell you to scratch build the actual cable itself which is a little bit weird I think we'll talk about that later we'll look at it then actually here it is right here I was looking about before and this little star symbol here is the symbol in the mini instructions for scratch build so they tell you to scratch build the cable itself I don't think you're gonna scratch build I think you're gonna find an extra from another kit you've built um, which is a little bit weird I think they would probably try to give you a tow cable but whatever I'll just leave the tow cable off and obviously leave off the end pieces and just leave the clamps, the photo which clamps empty. I don't really mind. Here we have some more details to go on this side of the superstructure. There's the little handles there for getting up. And then we have the hatches over here. Options for open or closed. I'm probably going to leave mine open because the interior looks pretty good. And it's been a little while since I've done a stug interior. And we also put on the jack here and also one little ventilator that we were building earlier. As for painting and marking options, they give you three, which are all gray, and it just depends if you want to put whichever markings on them. So basically you've got, this is the A vehicle, so you can see A right there, and it's just gray, nothing other than the A symbol. Also note it doesn't have the periscope holes there. And it also has, I guess, the uh, that square-ended block, or jack. And then here's vehicle B, which has crosses on the side. And it has the B here, and it also has this little symbol here for the unit that I was using, that I was used for training in. And it also, now it has the holes for the periscope mount there for the driver. This one didn't. And I guess it has that kind of like triangular shaped jack. And then vehicle C here uh, doesn't have crosses, but it has the symbol here and the C. And it also has the periscope, so, and also has that triangular jack end, so it just kind of depends. They're all the same. I was looking up some references. I'm not sure if these were actually just gray or if they were gray and brown because the Stoke 3 Aus A, uh, A second series, which are some weird transition vehicles uh, between A and B, and early Aus B were all painted in the factory in the tritonal, or sorry, not tritonal, two tone camouflage. It's gray, two thirds gray, one third brown, like you see on like Poland era um, Panzer III, stuff like that. Apparently that was true on all Stoke 3 Aus A and uh, early house bees, uh, but you can't see in, in black and white photos because brownish red looks like blackish gray and black and white, so you can't actually tell if they're camouflaged, but apparently they are. So I'm not sure if this would have been camouflaged. I, it's, I mean, it's, a, it's a prototype vehicle at training ground. I don't think it would be camouflaged, but it could have been, so I'm going to look that up, and if it is, I will definitely paint it up in the cool two-tone camouflage because that looks awesome. So the first sprue we're going to look at is this one here, which is actually a set of sprues in the bag. These are all of the uh, the tracks for the kit. And I want to make a correction earlier. I said everything was in one bag. Actually, there are some bags within the bag. So some of the sprues are kind of held tighter together, helping them not move around. And this is one of them. I'm actually not going to take them out of this bag, even though it's a little bit glary, because I don't want to make all these tracks fly around. But they look pretty good. So as you can see, they're molded in very long, kind of 12 track long sprues. And they have attachment points on the ends. Right there, you can see there's three and two on the back, which is just kind of typical Panzer III sprue cleanup. It's just, it's just like the Kaiser ones I was doing a couple weeks ago as well. So it's actually really easy to clean them up because they're just on the ends there. And also in a very nice change from the Dragon Panzer III Magic Tracks, there are no pin marks all over them, so they will be nice and easy to clean up with that easy, ta easy, easy attaching points there. So it shouldn't be too much of a problem. I'm looking forward to that. Next sprue here is all the clear parts. As you can see, we have some headlights and the periscope for the gun, and that's it. Looks like one of these might be the rear light or something like that. Uh, it's all you need. The Dragon ones have a lot more, but they have lots of extra pieces, so this is all you need. Looks really good. And they are nicely molded. Um, yeah, I guess you have attachment point at the end of the periscope here, which is a little bit of a pain, but whatever. You also have the decals on the kit, which are the A, B, and C. The crosses for the B option and the little symbols in the colors for A and B right there as well. I'm not sure which one I'll do. I might be able to find a photo of one of the other two that 
obviously not the A, B, and C ones because there was five of these made, so maybe they were different. But if I go with an option, I'll probably go with B because it's got the crosses on it. But these are pretty good. I, I don't know how good these decals are. Let's see who made them. They appear to be made by a company called Decograph, which is not Cartograph, but it's pretty close, so they might be good decals. Pretty sure they're fine. Most modern decals are always really good looking. And the, the actual amount of film on them seems to be very minimal. Also very nice was the inclusion of a little envelope. And inside the envelope, we have the photo watch parts. Which I guess is only one little sprue. Yep. And it's that new modern style that I like where they actually have sandwiched the photo watch between two pieces of uh, thin adhesive plastic. So basically what you do is you peel off one side of the plastic. I'm not going to do it right now, but... You peel off one side, and then when you cut your parts off with a little full watch fret, they won't go pinging away because they're still being kind of taped on lightly by the back section of the clear plastic. So that's always really nice. I see that now on trumpeter kits, and uh, I don't know, there are probably other ones as well. And it's a very, very nice addition, so you don't have photo watch flying away and then getting embedded in your feet later on when you walk around. And as you can see, we basically have all the louvers here I was talking about. And then a couple little parts here, which are probably tool clamps, headlight fronts here, uh, little uh, access hatches for the front, final drives, a couple little bolts from as well, which are so small I might even just leave them off because there's going to be a little bit of dirt there and it probably covered up. And then just a couple more parts here, including mounts for the antenna, it seems. So basically, a good amount of photo etch, not excessive, but it's basically what matters. Thin louvers, tool clamps and some other small details that really should be in the um, photo watch scale thickness. Also here we have the mount for the I guess the, the toolbox as well which looks nice and in scale so I am not going to be overwhelmed by photo watch on this build for sure. So this next screw here is repeated four times in the kit so I guess we'll get rid of them and basically um, we have a couple of the main road wheels here and some uh, return rollers I guess they are including the mounts from up here and some small little details here which I assume are all part of the bogey assembly that's why they're repeating them because there's I guess I guess there's eight bogeys in the kit because there's four per side in the tank and they're probably just giving you parts for basically one on each side and then they give you obviously four of these sprues and that'll cover all the bogeys the level details very good and also they've done that thing which I noticed on the uh, the TACOM T29 E3 where they've actually molded or lined up the uh, the row wheels here so they are kind of, they're not centered on the sprue they're flush with wh where one of the halves of the, um, the molding process would come across basically meaning that there isn't actually a seam line all the way around the wheel because where the seam line would happen is exactly flush with the top edge of the wheel, the top surface so you don't have to clean up around the entire wheel you just have to do the attachment points and it's only two per wheel which is very nice so minimal cleanup and a very good engineering of the location of those, um, I guess the location of the wheels with respect to the molding process. Little guys up here, and also even more little guys here which are like uh, toe or I guess mounting, hooking locations for the crane if they want to lift off some parts like the engine deck. More little parts here, and some bogey assemblies up here with a little bit of flash if you look at the bottom of the bogeys here, but it's not too bad especially because they'll be hidden by the wheels anyways, so it shouldn't be too much of a problem. Also a seam line on the wheels there, or not the wheels, but the bogey piece there. But other than that, there isn't really much seam lines on anything on this sprue. Looks really good. Once again, there's two of this sprue, so I'm going to get rid of one of them. And this sprue here contains the eye of the wheels, as well as the front of the driver's pocket here. And when I saw this, I remembered that another thing they fixed in this kit was the drive sprocket. So there's another drive sprocket on another sprue, which I think is the correct one. Obviously they'll have that fixed in the instructions, I'm not too sure exactly which one's right. But basically the difference is that this one has a round circle plate there on top of the, uh, at the very end, and the other one has a hexagonal one, or I guess octagonal, eight sides, yes. So we might not use this piece here, but um, this sprue basically just has some more bogey assemblies, and I guess these are probably either wheel mounts up there. Yeah, the actual other wheels on there, a couple of the little parts. And then what I've noticed with this kit is there's lots of little sprues. They're not having these huge sprues with tons of parts. You have to like, go through these little sprues with a bunch of little parts, which you'll get rid of. It's just like a couple of parts for the bogeys on this one, a couple of little parts for the idlers on that one. 
it's kind of more, I don't know, it should be less confusing to me because I don't have to have a ton of huge sprues on my bench. I can just work on the idlers and just only use this one little sprue. And once again, quality molding looks pretty good. I guess a little bit of a seam line, but you really can't avoid that when you have injection molding. It looks pretty good. Also the attachment points, the actual gates that go from the sprue to the actual part are very, very small, which is nice. So we got these two sprues here, and I believe this is the correct um, drive sprocket here, because as you can see the actual plate on the end there is not round, it's octagonal. We also have some parts for the engine deck here, which makes me think that this is a kind of correction sprue. We got the new wheels and the new engine deck pieces here. And also some new exhaust parts as well, which are the three things, exhaust, engine deck, and driver's pockets. These are the three things that were incorrect with their earlier releases of the Panzer III that they've fixed now. And kind of like what I was saying before, this is just a little sprue with a couple little parts. Wheels, engine deck parts, these are the little retention things for the end of the fenders. Uh, little parts here, I think that might be a holder for a fire extinguisher, maybe, or something like that, I'm not too sure. Hatches for the front of the hull, maybe, or an engine deck. And just exhaust parts, so a little sprue. But once again, molding on there looks really good. And they've impressed me by actually molding on the gates to the end of the teeth, not in between them like Dragon gave me in my Panzer 1, which is pain in the butt. <laughs> but that's good, that's easy to clean up. Now I believe these sprues are kind of the opposite of the first one I showed you with the incorrect uh, drive sprockets because they have more bogies on this one and some very similar pieces. It looks like you'll use. All the bogies on these guys, because you have a total of four bogies between the sprues. And you have the backs of the uh, drive sprockets here, and the actual mounts for them, the final drive covers, and some more little fine details all over this sprue. And it looks really good. The actual molding points are in smart locations. Um, and for the lights here, that's probably the best spot you could have it, honestly, because Dragon's always given me them. I'm building a Dragon Sherman currently, and they're always like right at the top. And they just kind of ruin that demarcation between like the lens cover and the little line there. They always put it right on top of that and it kills it. But these are nice, they're on the back, on the bottom, and they're on a nice, I mean, not really flat, it's slightly rounded, but they're on a place with no details. And like I was saying before, they're very small. Also have some fire extinguishers here, which even though they're not given in photo watch, um, they look really good. It's pretty impressive how well they can mold plastic these days. Hopefully we get some more new Stug kits coming. I'm hoping for a Ryefield one or a Tacom one with a full interior like a Stug 3G. I want it. <laughs> we also have a whole bunch of these little guys here which are little lengths of pin it seems. So they'll want you to actually cut the, the sprues, probably just cut them off straight and then you'll just kind of use whatever length you need, maybe cut them there. Don't use your good sprue cutters, use a pair of older sprue cutters because Cutting thick pieces of sprue with your brand new cutters will make them dull and it will probably make them out of alignment. But these are little track pins that work with the Molokast style of tracks. So as you can see they're very very fine. You just poke them in and you can use a knife just to slice them all off because they're very thin or your sprue cutters. Because you actually like leave them on the sprue, jam the sprue up into the tracks and then you just cut them off and that leaves them all lined up and nice and easy to work with. And we have a whole bunch of these, I think we have like four or five of these sprues. And they have a whole bunch of pins, but you probably have a whole bunch of extras because um, you might lose a couple. But I haven't ever found these falling out of the tracks. They usually stay in pretty nicely because you just kind of ram in there, poke them in with a knife afterwards if, you, if you're a little bit worried. But don't glue them because that will ruin the workability of the tracks. And we also have this little jig, which works with it. You just kind of put the tracks on it, and then you put the pins in and the fact that you have this and the pins all in one big, like the pins are all in one big piece as well, really helps you line them up nicely and makes it go by pretty quick because you have eight of, you have eight tracks in the sprue here, 96 per side, so you only have to go through a couple of iterations of this to get the entire uh, length of track done. We have two more sets of little four packs of track, or I guess more like bogey assemblies, and they're all just kind of like the same thing, but they're different between the two. But they're just they're just more bogey parts, bump stops. Looks like some idler mounts in that one, maybe, or maybe that's actually mounts for the bogies. 
Um, but they're all just little tiny parts that are used in the assembly of the bogies, I would assume, because there's a whole bunch of them. As you can see, they contain similar parts. And they look really good. But I don't want to bore you too much by going over a bunch of little sprues, so... That's how you're going to see these guys. And the last of the little tiny sprues are these two guys here. Which are little stowage boxes that go in the rear of the fenders, like I was talking about. And they also have the headlights. And just a few of the little handles, probably for hatches. And the, um, the mounts here for the front of the superstructure. And the crane. Maybe a horn or something, I don't know. Just little details here in these little hatches are probably for the stowage boxes themselves. Alright, now let's get to some of the bigger sprues. This one here appears to be a Panzer III turret sprue because we have a turret floor basket area. A shell catch your bag here. Some weird tools we won't be using. Um, also, look at how thin that clamp is on that wire cutter. Adam Man's going to love that. That looks really, really in scale actually. Considering it's plastic, that looks really good. I don't even know if we're going to use these, honestly, because the prototype vehicle, I don't think has those. I think we're only using this sprue for the jacks up here, actually. And maybe other couple of small parts for the hull and stuff like that. But I don't think much of this sprue is going to be used. But I might just keep those little tools handy for another build if I'm not going to use them. Because they look really good. Here we have a nice big sprue, though it's more like two of them, I guess. And this one has a whole bunch on this area. Engine deck, hull front, rear plate, sides of the superstructure, uh, new exhaust, I guess, and the tow mounts for the front of the hull. And over here we have a whole bunch of parts which are all for the gun assembly. You can see we have halves for the reciprocator housing. That's the reciprocator housing itself, I guess. Gun mantlet pieces here, parts for the gun mount. More trunnion pieces, and just little details here for the actual mechanism. Gun barrel up here. A nice, um, well-molded... Uh, part of the gun, like, mounted in the hull itself, actually, with a nice piece of foam to keep it from getting bent, which is very nice. And more little seats here, more gun breech parts, stuff like that. So areas like this is where those photo watch louvers are going to go in. But honestly, the plastic ones look pretty thin, too, what they have on there, so it looks really good. Hull front here looks nice. I think you had to drill a couple holes for the, uh, the location of the headlights. Rear plate and side plates here look good. Not much molded on them, but what is molded on them, little plates and bolts, looks really nice. And the exhausts over here are in halves, like you basically get in every kit, so a little bit of a seam there to clean up, but it's probably not going to be too bad. And little details over here. And over on the top here are more little details like I was talking about. The gun itself, um, I mean, I guess you're going to end up with some molding points there to clean up because the goods are going to be exposed um, but it shouldn't be too hard honestly there is basically like no seam line on it though so it looks really good so just careful clean up of those and you should be fine and more parts here lots of little details I'm not going to bore you by going over every single one but as you can see quality molding on them looks excellent with all those little parts little bolts and things like that molded on there and the actual attachment points are very thin, which I like. So minimal cleanup. And this is basically the entire gun mechanism on this sprue here. It looks great, actually. This sprue here contains a whole bunch of other parts, which are mainly superstructure and fender components. As you can see, we have the kind of a whole assembly piece here, which has the front, the roof, and everything like that. Rear wall, including like an interior wall component. Fenders on the bottom, obviously and some sides and more details like that. Looking in there closely you can see that it's nicely molded uh, at least the bolts, there isn't any weld detail within these gaps in the plates, I'm not sure if there really should be uh, I think there should be but maybe these prototype vehicles were a little bit different in how they are made, I don't know but I would assume there should be some welds there but it's so small I can't even get in there to add one myself so not much I can do about that. Fenders look good, nice texture on them Especially that tread pattern looks really good. And you can see a couple of molding points here for fender supports and stuff like that. And some nice hinges actually at the ends. Further up here we have the front plate option with the periscope and without. And then we have some fronts for the, or I guess the side superstructure here. So you can see a little bit of flash at the top right there. Along the edges here as well, but it's not too bad. 
There is, however, a very nice welding detail on the edges of this box here, which is the sponson box for the radios, or I guess the one radio, which goes on one side, kind of where this is on that guy. The jack block over here does not have a wooden texture on it, it's just pretty flat and smooth. Um, but I guess it goes underneath the actual toolbox itself. This guy here goes on top of it, so you won't really miss that um, texture at all. So, shouldn't be much of a problem. Just a little bit of oil work on it and painting, and it's going to look fine. We have new ends for the jack here. Here are the MP40 mounts. And they actually do have these straps molded on, and they look very, very good actually. They're very nice and fine. Very good molding on there actually, so those will look nice. And up here we have the sides of the superstructure. This is where those kind of angled pieces with a little bit of flash on them pop on. That's where the sponsored box goes. Also with a little bit of flash on it. You can see much of a nice hole molded in the vision port there, which looks good. The other side is just kind of plain. That's what it is. We also have little attachment points there for the sides of those little I guess the edges of those little hooks there for where the superstructure can be lifted off for the crane. Here is the antenna. Uh, kind of typical nowadays where you have to do a bunch of cleanup on it. I might just slice it off, place it with a piece of styrene rod because I don't want to deal with all that cleanup. But I might anyway just to keep my skills honed. Doesn't really matter. Over here we have the radio, which looks great. Uh, they don't have the typical molted on dragon blob for the handle there. I'm pretty sure it's a little full wedge part. So that's a bonus, and we have a bunch of little hatches and looks like a little seat over here. These are all like superstructure roof hatches and stuff like that. This is that mystical piece that Dragon always tells you to put on. It goes over top of the gun on the superstructure. Right in there. Never glue it onto a Dragon kit because then you can't get the gun, the gun out. Leave it separate and leave the roof separate. That's my quick tip for the day. And here we have that other style of jack. The little bolts on it and the little triangular end piece. This is for Stug options B and C. We also have the shovel here. A nicely molded clamp. I have to do some close ups here for Adam Man, but as you can see, that clamp looks really good. And remember, they give you a little bit of photo wedge as well, which I'm pretty sure simulates the actual clasp, but the, um, like the handle piece. But what's molded here does look really good. And it's very finely molded, it looks great. And over here we have the barrel cleaning rods. I'm not sure how, how accurate those mountings for them are, like the actual kind of like rail pieces here and here. They look kind of weird, but that must be accurate because I don't know, it looks pretty good anyways. I'll look up and fix it if I need to and I'll talk about it in the post build review. And our final sprue here is the hull tub. As you can see we have the hull floor here. And the sides over here, um, I guess some rear plates up here and the front plate as well. And then we have fenders here. I don't think we'll use these fenders, we might use the other ones I'm pretty sure. These are probably Panzer three fenders. Also have some engine deck hatches here which you probably won't use. The early exhausts from the older version that are incorrect so use the other ones on the sprue. There's some turret side hatches here if you're going to put a Panzer three turret on your Stug. Rear towing mount area. And I'm not sure what that is, a gun mount or something? I have, I have no idea what that is. Looking at the whole size here, looks pretty good actually. And you can actually see that there are some nice molded on kind of like weld details on the edges there. Looks really good actually. I was disappointed why I didn't see welds on the superstructure top. I'm not sure if they should be there, but looking at all this stuff here and what I showed in the last brew as well, like on the radio sponsor box, it looks pretty good. Also see how they've molded nice details inside there. Mounts for the actual bogies themselves. Pretty impressive. And once again, lots of molding points, but they're pretty thin, so it shouldn't be too much of a problem to clean them up, and I'm also pretty sure that these won't even be visible. Just gotta make sure you do a decent job because that'll make sure that everything lines up nice and square for the actual super or sorry, the hull floor area. Rear plate here in the front with the transmission access covers. We have the fenders here, which we won't use. We looked at the last ones already. We have the front, the fender uh, fronts here, I think, which you can see have nice details there that'll mesh nicely with the fenders.
nice thinly molded vents there, but though I don't think we'll actually use them because we have a new engine deck. And I guess we've got more fender ends over here. And then we have the floor here, which is pretty basic. It's just a big floor piece. But you can see, once again, some nice welds mold on the end there. And it does look really decent, actually. Though it's pretty basic. There's just a flat piece of plastic on the inside. So that's everything in the box of the new Mini Art Stoke 3 prototype series. It looks really impressive in there. I look, I like the look of the instructions, I like the look of the, um, the sprue layouts and having nice little compact sprues with small assemblies on them so I can get rid of the sprues pretty quick because one thing I hate is having a whole bunch of sprues lying around everywhere that I'm only using one or two parts from. Cough, cough, dragon. It's also very refreshing to see a Stoke 3 kit that isn't a dragon kit, uh, though the Bronco ones are pretty good too nowadays. And uh, it looks good, like I don't know how it builds up, but it should be nice. The overall level of molding was nice, small touching points in many areas. Nice welds on the areas that I pointed out. And um, a lot of the detail was actually pretty nice and in scale. It looked really impressive. So I'm actually going to build this up very soon. I don't think I will do a build video showing all the sprues going together and all the parts because that takes a while for me. It makes builds a little bit demoralizing and go on forever. But I will definitely do a post build review, which as you probably know, it's basically like this. But I'm talking about how the kit was after I finished building it, which probably gives you a little more actual idea about what it's like. So like I said in the video intro, huge thanks to Juno Models for supplying me with this kit. Like I said, they are the supplier in Canada for a bunch of manufacturers including Mini Art and Tacom. So if you see this kit or the new Panthers Junior Model Shop in Canada here, it's probably thanks to them. I'll have a link to their website in the video description. And also huge thanks to the Patreons who support me uh, with a couple of dollars a month on Patreon. Or a, couple, a little bit more than a couple of dollars a month for some people. Uh, they are Gary Wayne Bradford, Stephen Eldridge, Philip Kruger, uh, Sandy Slaw. Kohinek, I think I can't speak any language that's not Canadian, so I'm sorry if I'm butchering your names. Ricky from Ryan's Painting, Harry Ainsworth, Chris Course, Ian Sustrick, Johnny Fox, Richard Ward, John Butler, Sam Murphy, Barry Olage, and Joan Yi. As I said, much appreciated that you guys will support me. Helps me um, when I'm not getting kits for free from suppliers um, and buying kits for you guys seeing reviews, also buying products and stuff like that. Um, so, yes, much appreciated. Oh, and also, huge thanks to. Dr. Eo, who supports me through PayPal in this very similar fashion. Can't forget you. And I hope you enjoyed the video. If you have any questions or comments, please post them in below. Um, I will let you know how this builds up. It shouldn't take me too long. I'm pretty familiar with Stugs, and I always, always like to breeze through a build pretty quick, especially when it's something as cool as this. As you can tell, I'm pretty excited for this kit, and I've been waiting for it for a little while. It's finally come out, so yes. <laughs> Alright, thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you next one. Goodbye, and happy modeling.